I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good afternoon, good afternoon, Sean Pickett. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful afternoon? I am doing great. Thanks for having me on. How are you doing, Angel? I am excellent. It's a great pleasure to connect with you, Sean. Please do tell me, what part of the world are you in right now? I am in uh, bright and sunny Dallas, Texas, USA. Ah, that is great. Good to know. Good to know. It's raining here in Trinidad. Raining, pouring. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Usually well, sunny. usually it's sunny, right? Usually yeah. It's sunny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So, Sean, tell me, which of your talents is responsible for us meeting? Well, let's see. I own a couple businesses: uh, a sales coaching, consulting, training business called Sales Integrity, and have a software company called My Coach Site. I also host a podcast myself called the Sales Integrity Podcast. So, I think through those. Uh, those channels there, we got connected uh, from Courtney Blair and uh, Zippy Content, and here we are. I'm happy to be on, excited to be on with you. Well, those are amazing talents that you've spoken of there, right? So we have the entrepreneurship aspect, and we also have the integrity that you've combined via sales, which is um, something that is definitely scarce, isn't it? Yes, it is. And as a matter of fact, I started the company back in 2004, and I was very purpose-driven in naming it Sales Integrity because it really sparked the conversation of can you have integrity while selling, right? Yeah. And that's really my whole approach is being purpose-driven, having integrity, and that's what we go in and work with the entrepreneurs and founders of tech companies that we go in and help them build, develop, and lead their sales organizations, but also down to that one-on-one -on -one level of coaching sales professionals and teaching them that that method, if you will, of having integrity while selling. So yeah, it is it is unique, and I'm happy to uh, help help the cause. Hmm. So I'm guessing uh, your life before the naming of the company um, it, it really was instrumental in you coming up with the name. I'd like to know now that you've named it that, and it's been a couple of years. Uh, what have you seen? Uh, what have you seen as the result of naming it that? Yeah, so it did what, what I wanted it to do early on back when I started the company in 2004, which was spark that conversation of people asking questions. Because when they back then when you thought of sales, a lot of people were saying, wow, this uh, – you know, is sales a reputable profession? Can you have integrity while selling? And I'm like, I'm glad you asked that, right? So it gave me an opportunity in a, in a forum or a platform, if you will, to really go through that educational sales process and helping people understand you can indeed have integrity while selling. Throughout the years now, you know, especially in the in the niche I focus on, it's complex technical B2B selling, lots of tech companies. Um, you're selling to senior executives at large companies. So you absolutely have to have integrity. You have to be very disciplined and purpose-driven in your approach and transparent and make sure that you're doing the right thing at all times and, and helping guide a customer through their buying journey. So I see it more prevalent today and, and people still like the name. It still captures their attention, if you will, um, but for a different purpose. You know, in the earlier days, it was more of a almost a conflictive conversation like you know they were challenging me can you have that <laughs> and then I had a chance to really educate them on it, it was great because I, I you know any attention is good intention when you're trying to build up your company and then now it really just aligns with our overall brand and purpose and what we're doing to help our customers I love it I love it so who did you learn uh, the value of integrity from both my parents were very instrumental in teaching me about integrity look people in the eye shake their hand um, you know, open doors, be respectful of others. Don't lie. Don't ever lie. Always tell the truth, even if it's, uh, if it's painful and, and, and embarrassing or whatever it may be. But that way you have your reputation that follows you around. And if you always have integrity, you'll be known as someone that people want to be around. And, and that was kind of a, some values that my, both my parents had, had instilled in me, you know, just always do the right thing. And especially when no one's looking and, uh, do things the right way. So they instilled that in me at a very young age. I'm from a large family, one of seven kids. We're all very close, all, me and my, all my siblings. And so my parents, uh, you know, had a tight ship growing up and we all were in it together. And there was kind of no hiding. You couldn't get away with lying and trying to mislead or anything like that. You had to have integrity. Yeah. It seems as though the picket was laid way before, right? <laughs> That's right. There. That's I love right. it. I love it. Well, tell me why you will continue, now that you've been doing this, Sean, for so many years, why you will continue to repeat this skill. Yeah, you know what? It's just so much fun. I, I always kind of joke with people and in, in a serious manner. I say I'm, it's the same Sean principle. So I, I conduct my behavior and I treat people the same, whether it's my parents, my siblings, my wife, 
friends, uh, business partners, clients, no matter who I come across, they'll all tell you, oh yeah, that's Sean. You know, it's the same Sean principle. You don't ever have to worry about what you, what you said. If you're, you know, if you're misleading people on it, if you're always transparent, you're always truthful, you're always doing the right thing and have an integrity, it's easy to maintain, you know, one Sean in this case, or just one, whoever you are, insert your name. Right. So for me, it's, it's very, um, it's very refreshing. It's very, uh, um, invigorating to be that way. And then you go in and I line that with the business that I have, you know, where I go in and teach companies how to do that. And it's not just about integrity being truthful. Integrity also means doing the right things, focusing on the right things and doing those things the right way. And in selling it's, you know, there's, there's a method, there's techniques, there's a systematic approach that you need to follow to make sure you're, you're always doing the right thing that you could sell more, earn more, help your customers out. So it aligns very nicely with the brand and, and what I'm doing business wise too. Sean, do you know Aaron Walker or of Aaron Walker? Have you ever heard that name? I have not heard of Aaron Walker. Who, okay. Who's Aaron? Well, we definitely connect you both, but your voice and his voice and in terms of the dedication and the passion that is represented by what you're teaching and sharing, it's the same. So it'd be great to connect great. you guys um, most definitely. But Sean, tell me one thing that you've done consistently over the last three years. This is a very good question. I'm glad you asked it. I did listen to some of your episodes before this cause I always prepare. Right. And that's, that's the main thing that I do is, is preparation. We have a mantra called make your sales pop and pop uh, naturally stands, you know, for preparation, organization, productivity. Mm. And I studied Keystone habits quite a bit. And a keystone habit, I'm sure you may be familiar, if not, for those that are out there listening, keystone habit is a habit that drives all your other habits. And when I discovered that, you know, a keystone habit could be good or bad, for instance, if you get up early every morning and you go work out at five in the morning, let's say, um, that's a positive keystone habit and will have a ripple effect on all your other habits. You're probably going to eat healthy because you don't want to ruin the fact that you had a good workout. You're going to be, you're going to have more energy. You're going to be more passionate, more creative, treat people better, get more done, right? So there's a ripple effect there and that keystone habit was getting up early. Likewise, if you stayed up late at night watching a ball game, drinking beer and eating potato chips and slept in and you're sluggish the next day, mm -hmm. it's probably going to have a ripple effect the other way. So when I uncovered that and really discovered that, I should say, um, I built that into a morning routine and I call it a personal development power hour. So every morning I do dedicate time to myself and personal development, pray, read, uh, inspirational material, meditate, feed my mind with positive information, get ready for the day. And I've done that every day, not only last three years, but for, for well over a decade. Wow. And that served me really well because it puts me in the right mindset every day, gives me a chance to slow down in a very busy world and really focus on growth, personal development and not getting overwhelmed or anxious. Yeah. Tell me a one word, one word for how it makes you feel. Invigorated. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm getting invigorated just by you describing the way you feel and <laughs> the way you do what you do. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, so just to someone out there, why they should even consider um, really putting that on the front burner, putting themselves on the front burner, the, the prayer, the, the, the fueling, if you would. Yeah, uh, your mind is a very powerful tool. And the reason, you know, what you want to do is you want to control what's what's being fed into your mind. So it's a choice whether you watch TV or not, whether you watch news and feed your mind with all the bad information that's on, you know, Facebook, for instance. You know, you could filter that out and just have only good information in your stream or you can have bad information. So it's the choice you make of what am I going to feed my mind with? And that's going to fuel me and propel me either forward or backward. So you control it if you're feel, feeling overwhelmed and feel like you're down and on your luck or you're experiencing some challenges is right now, the minute you start feeding your mind and controlling that on a consistent daily basis, and you don't even have to put an hour in. If you just spent 10 minutes meditating, for instance, you know, just clearing your mind and, and meditating and thinking through you know, your life, just kind of clearing that out. And then maybe another five minutes to you read an inspirational quote or something like that, or some, some work that will help. That'll be a good start. So you don't have to bite off everything right away. You don't have to go full hour, maybe start off five, 10 minutes and then kind of build up from there. Amazing audience, we are live with Sean Pickett. Do check him out. I think one of the best places for you to go check him out is on his podcast, Seals Integrity Podcast. Um, there's another podcast as well, right? Like I was listening to something with business, right? No, no, no. It's definitely Seals Integrity Podcast. I'm yeah. listening to a ton of podcasts now. My apologies. No worries. Um, I'm sure you are. You're, you're busy. Over a thousand. Now I think you're over 1,200 uh, yeah. interviews. That is very impressive. So yeah. I don't think anyone's hustling uh, any harder than you are. That's well, great. Yeah, it's great. Well, Sean, let's switch gears for a moment now. And let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. 
Sean, what is your earliest childhood memory? Great question. I had to think through this. It was when I was five year old, five years old, my golden birthday. I turned five on August 5th. Um, and so uh, we went camping. So we'd go camping a lot when I was a kid. And this is my very first memory, really. I was thinking back, trying to think back before, but I couldn't. And I remember Star Wars was big and uh, I got a Darth Vader carrying case. I was all excited. And I, I mentioned earlier, I'm one of seven kids. So I'm the second youngest. I have a younger brother and a sister that's just older than me. We're the youngest three. We were in a wagon. And uh, we were kind of pulling around, you know, the fire pit, if you will. There's, you know, rocks and a fire going. And all of a sudden we started going downhill and my sister jumps out, my younger brother jumps out. And I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> and then I hit the hit the rock fireplace. I got dumped right into the fire, literally into the fire. And my hand just blew up like a bubble and, and burned. And it kind of ruined the birthday and the, and the camp experience. My mom had to take me off to the to the hospital and all that stuff. And that's from that point forward, I kind of have memories of life, but before that, I really don't. So that, that'll be something that really wakes you up. If you will, if you're getting thrown in the fire, it does, it does, it does. Why do you think this memory is so clear? I just think it was such a vivid experience, right? I mean, it's a, even a traumatic experience later on it, believe it or not, I actually like fire and fireplaces and stuff like that. So it, it didn't instill like a huge fear in me, but at that moment, wow, it was just kind of a shock. My back was the fire. I got dumped into it and kind of spun over and tried to break the fall with my hand and the hand went in the fire. So I just think it was such a vivid memory because of what occurred. And that's why it was my earliest memory. Hmm. That's intriguing. Hey, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? I would love that. I love the idea of your dedication. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like you were in that wagon and your dedication was that you're going to get to the end of the, the place you decided you were going to go. I mean, you're a child and you're in it, but you, you would, you would, you were mystified then by why are they leaving? The idea is that we're going to get to the end of this um, journey. And it's really intriguing that the integrity aspect that occurred with that moment is definitely an integrity thread, if you would, that has run through your entire life where you ensure that it's going to be something that is done with integrity from the top down. Um, that, my friend, is very fascinating. That's awesome. Great interpretation. Never thought of it like that, but you're right. I was committed and I was sticking with it to the end. And uh, yeah, very interesting. Interesting interpretation. I love that. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, if we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? You know, this is a good question as well. I had to look back. The year was 1985. And so if you like 80s music, there's lots of good music going on there. Um, one that stood out to me because MTV was becoming real big with videos, actually back when they played videos, um, there was a band called Aha, and they had a song called Take On Me. And I don't know if you remember that, if you've ever seen that video, but it was kind of a mixture between a sketch, a pencil sketch notebook, and a woman gets pulled in there by the guy, and she's kind of in between these worlds of a, a pencil sketch world and then the real world. And then uh, it was just really interesting because I think it's just a whole focal point on your imagination, right? And that's what I really liked about it. So between the video and the song, which I do like, and the name of the band, Aha, having aha moments in the coaching world is kind of an interesting thing too. So that's something I really, really uh, like. So that's a song that stood out to me. There were a lot of good ones that year, yeah. but I always remember that one mainly probably because I'm visual and that video really uh, stuck in my mind. That's good. Amazing audience, he's connecting the dots, right? While we are talking, he's actually doing it, right? <laughs> uh, but what I do like as well is that, you know, it's 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 in the, in the world of integrity, it's really about taking me on, right? It's it's taking me on because it's me, right? In the mirror, right? The, the guy who needs to to say yes or no in that moment. It's it's like it's like you, right? It's it's really a fight against you. And uh, once you win that and you do the thing of integrity, I think that definitely the change comes. Yep, I agree. Absolutely. Hey, Sean, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to go pretty quickly here. Sean, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yeah, actually, I have a licensing program at Sales Integrity where I'm bringing on coaches and I've systemized. I have a whole business system for my coaching business. So I'm making sure I'm teaching others how to use what I've created, my life work over the years and helping them build businesses themselves, coaching businesses so they can go off and, and apply what I've, what I've built and what I'm teaching them. Absolutely. Are you married? I am married. And do you have children? Yes, we actually have a 15-month-old daughter named Sofiana. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Well, tell me, do you believe in God? I do. 
Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No, not more than three hours a day, but on the weekends during football season, I'll watch that. And I'm a big Cubs fan and uh, huh. I've been watching baseball. But when, when those events aren't going on, I don't really watch TV uh, that much. And what about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Oh, it's more than eight. Yeah, with, with running two businesses and we deliver live remote video chat coaching to, to sales professionals all over the world. So, yeah, there, there's quite a bit of screen time, uh, more than eight for sure. You know, I'm, so I'm on your I'm on your LinkedIn profile and the image. So I'm looking at the um, <laughs> the why social selling versus cold calling is like a political debate and who is <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, yeah, it definitely stole my attention. Well, my friend, hey, after having a thousand and one conversations in three months, I came up with a workbook, the name of it being yours, your own unique real self. As you dig deeper into that, as you dig deeper into yourself, you uncover your own unique real statement, your mission, if you would. If you had to share with us, Sean, your own unique real statement, something that represents who you are, what would you say that is? This one's very easy. I could line up a thousand and one people and and you could ask them that question. They'll all say the same thing. And my mantra and my personal statement is make it a great day. And I end every email with that. I end every podcast with that. Um, When I talk to people, I I end with that. And and there's a reason behind that, which is really being deliberate and purpose driven um, and having integrity. What you do, you either if you say have a great day, that means things are happening to you and you're just going to have that. I like being proactive and and purpose driven, right? So I say make it a great day and it actually sets me apart. And a lot of my friends joke with me about that and they say, man, every time I say that, I feel like I owe you a royalty for for using that. <laughs> you, you've trademarked that. So I'm definitely known and branded personally around that. Make it a great day. Yeah. Even in the email conversation we had, yeah, you had that in there. Make it a great day. Love yep. it. Hey, well, Sean, hey, this has been a great pleasure. Hey, before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Yeah, so I appreciate everyone's time. I actually created a, a free seven-day video email course. It's called How to Master the Game of Complex Technical Selling or Seven Steps to Master the Game of Complex Technical Selling. And it gives you free, like 15, 10 to 15 minute uh, free coaching sessions, video coaching sessions, if you will, and seven applicable steps. For those entrepreneurs that are building businesses or those that are even selling, this is very useful for you. So if you go to Master Complex Selling, dot com master complex selling dot com that's a free gift to you the sales integrity podcast is on itunes stitcher soundcloud where podcasts are played and if you go to sales dot com that has all the info info that you need on sales integrity and there's a whole bunch of other freebies on there for you as well love it sean pickett hey thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 minute convos with angel jones thank you so much angel i appreciate it thank you for being on 12 minute convos with angel jones Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.